Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel. Sorry, didn't want to set up my other camera, so I thought I'd grab the old webcam here. Um, this video is just a real quick snippet of a video that's available on the website, l1training.com. And uh, this is just a procedure for programming, a, a APEM or a Ford Sync, whatever you want to call it. It's APEM programming is what we're doing through uh, because of sync issues. Tons of issues with these. A lot of these are still available as recalls or extended warranties, and a lot of them are not. But we were called to do a Gen 1, which was not part of... Uh, anything that's going to be covered for free by Ford. So because of that, we went ahead and recorded it because we get so many questions about it, and it is kind of convoluted. Um, the procedure I'm about to show you is just the programming procedure. In order to get this to work successfully, there's a bunch of other setup required. Um, and the full video is available on the website, along with, like, a ton of other videos. We do module programming. We do EEPROM. We do diagnosis. We do ADOS stuff. We do a ton of uh, diagnostic process videos. Um, all kinds of stuff over on the website. So you could go go there, l1training.com, and sign up, and you can see this whole video and, and all the other stuff we've got. It's a ton of great content. I know you'll enjoy it. Um, either way, stick around and check out some sync programming. So go ahead and select your all vehicle lines. That's your, your Oasis login. It should open up Oasis. Now you're gonna need to sit here and wait for about 20 seconds. If all of that is set up correctly and your VCM2 is currently plugged into the computer and plugged in the car, just wait and that read VIN and DTCs tab that's gray is gonna turn green. Again, it takes up to a minute sometimes. Um, see it turned for us. So now we can select that. It should connect to the VCM2 and now remember, you don't want IDS running in the background right now. You just want the VCM2 plugged in the computer, and you also want, uh, much like all the TSBs and stuff say, there's another uh, USB cable that you're going to need, and I'll insert a picture of it here. It's basically just an A to A. All right, so it, we're going to press Go. Notice it pulls it up from our diagnostic menu. We go to the drop down and just click the sync. You're going to want to install that uh, S-boot driver right there. I know you may not be doing, um, you may be doing a Sync 3, but even if you're not, go ahead and click that and install it. And down at the bottom, there's a Read Sync tab. Click that. It's going to open up a little, uh, like, mini IDS version. So whatever version of IDS you're on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to open it up, and it's going to collect data from the vehicle and identify the vehicle, and it's going to read the version of Sync that's currently in the APIM. Once that happens, you're going to see that we have um, our, our APEM programming screen. So I'm going to make sure that force programming of SIP is open. Make sure that your VCM2 is plugged into the laptop as well as your mail-to-mail -mail USB cable we were talking about earlier. It just goes from a USB port on the laptop to the USB port on the dash. Once all that's done, just click the Program Sync button down here at the bottom. Once you do that, it's going to open up that little uh, IDS version again. And it's basically, I'm going to fast forward through this. I think this is a total of about eight minutes. But it's basically just going to blow through all of installing this stuff. Um, it's going to reset the module. At this point, you'll see that we have the programming has been successfully completed. And then if you have a touch screen, you're going to need to click that Start My Touch Screen Calibration Process and do that. This was just a, a sync version one, so that's pretty much it. Um, there's really not much more to this. So I'm just going to go ahead and click sync again. Uh, you're going to notice that at the top it says that uh, the vehicle already has the latest version of sync software. Reinstalling the same SIP into the accessory protocol interface module is not recommended. Uh, that's it. I mean, that's we're completed and. And it's pretty simple after that.